and then the indoctrination came second. Common Core marks the very first time where the paradigm is flipped. The purpose of Common Core now, the first purpose is the sociology, and only second or maybe third comes the actual. The learning is actually less important now. They're not trying, they don't want your kids to get ahead, they're not trying to make your kids super confident, they don't want your kids to excel in one subject area, they want your kids to be the same in all the subject areas. That, my friends, is called, and we've had it since the 1980s, it's called outcome-based education. And what that means is, it doesn't matter how smart your kid is, doesn't matter whether he tries or doesn't try, doesn't matter whether he's very good at a subject or not very good, doesn't matter whether he's got a good work environment or a good attitude, all that matters is where the kid ends up when he's done, right? Our job is to get all the kids to the same place. Now, you, you've listened to me long enough to determine whether or not you think I'm credible. So I think I can say this now, because I couldn't have said this earlier without losing some of you. Please tell me how that's not socialism. Please tell me when, rather than dealing with kids who and as they are, allowing them to become whether uh, somebody who can read Shakespeare in third grade or somebody who can do geometry in third grade, rather than letting us be what we are, they guarantee that every kid ends up the same kid. And let me ask you this. You want to get 60, a mil 60 million American school kids to exactly the same place. Is that place going to be higher or lower than it is now? It has to be. Look, if we want to start playing this game, let's make the NBA gen genuinely inclusive. There is nobody in the NBA who looks like me. Nobody. And I'm not picky. You put me in the NBA, I'll be content to sit at the end of the bench in my jumpsuit and wave a towel. Just give me my $4 million minimum NBA salary. Okay. Wouldn't that be more socially just? But what would that do? Would you pay a $1 to the NBA to watch me fumbling around? No, you wouldn't. It destroys it, right? Now that's the paradigm that your kids are laboring under. And so for the very first time, the pedagogy now is relatively insignificant compared to the overriding ambition of Common Core, which is to see your kids, control of your kids, the decisions that your kids will make, what your kids will learn about sex and gender and marriage and family and country, those things now belong to them, not you. And if these are national standards, and here's the other question I want to ask you. If these standards are all national, federal, and tested, what happens if you're a family who has the crass misfortune of teaching your 10-year-old or your 12-year-old that marriage is between a man and a woman. What happens if that's what your family believes? And that's what your religion believes? But your school says it's not true? Somebody's bullying that kid, aren't they? Mm. Do you think now that Washington's in control that you're going to win that battle? You think the school's going to stop teaching your kid its version because of yours? Or is the school going to come after you for yours? Are we at least recognizing that we're opening the door for this? Yes. <clears throat> All right, we're, getting, we're almost done. This is the actual test of another student. And I love what the mom wrote on it. My, uh, my family does not feel these questions are appropriate. Please dismiss these questions from Audrey's grade. We teach our children not to sleep around. <laughs> but why are moms and dads all across the country having to write things like this on homework assignments and send them back in? And when they tell you this, and they'll tell you this, that's the fault with the textbooks, not the fault of Common Core. You can't separate those two things, right? right? And we've said it, and we've shown it, and it's been reiterated again and again. And let me prove to you what I'm talking about. 20, I'm, I'm at 27 and counting. 27 now different American school districts in this country over the last year and a half have publicly on their websites threatened, threatened moms and dads not to let their kids get ahead in math. Here's one. This is the entire school district for Irvine County, Irvine County, California, the school district of Irvine. What happened was, is the Irvine Unified School District, Orange County, California. We, now, after a year and a half that this was up, we finally got them to pull this down. So it's not, but I'll show you the screenshots, I've got them. If you can't find it now, but I'll show you the dates and the times that it were up. People have written articles about this. There, and there, there are 26 other school districts that have done this. What happened in Irvine is moms and dads started to freak out because by the time their kids were in fourth and fifth grade, they couldn't do simple addition problems in their head. They couldn't, they, they, were, not, they were prohibited from memorizing the, the, the multiplication tables. They couldn't add eight times seven in their head. And so the moms freaked out and started hiring tutors for the kids and started having the kids in the schools work on math that was a, a, a grade above. The school freaked out. Here's what they said. Here's the warning. The 
the links on this page are intended to support the classroom instruction that your child receives from his teacher. It is not appropriate to go ahead of classroom instruction or to use this site to have your child work on math that is intended for subsequent grade levels. That's the warning. You want to hear the threat? Your child's math instruction and math placement will not change as a result of working ahead. This means that your child will continue to work in the grade level appropriate math regardless of any work that is done from these materials and submitted to the teacher. No matter what your kid is capable of, no matter where your kid can go, he's going to stay democratically chained to his peers. No one's moving forward. That's why they're pulling, that's why they're pulling calculus out of high schools, lest somebody think their kid might get there. This is the underlying ethos of Common Core. Whatever you may think of that textbook or this assignment or what your daughter tells you her little girl thinks about it, this is the underlying ethos that is fused all the way through Common Core from top to bottom. We're just about done. I, I should come back 